So probability, just to give you an idea of what probability is about, probability, uh, the create a sample space for tossing a coin three times. So H is for heads and T is for tails. Uh, the probability, what is the probability you toss two heads and one tail? So one way to answer probability questions is to make a sample space. Um, but a lot of times we won't actually use a sample space. There are much easier ways to do it. But just to give you an idea, the sample space would be you can get all heads. We've done this before. You can get two heads and a tail, or head, tail, head, or tail, heads, heads. You can get uh, one head and two tails, or uh, two tails and a head, or a head, or a tail, head, tail. Uh, you can also get three tails, no heads. So the probability, probability is you want the ways that you can succeed divided by the total ways in the sample space. So the ways to succeed, that would be tossing two heads and one tail. So that would be these three ways. You can get two heads and one tail. So you would have three ways that you can succeed. Three ways out of a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the probability would be three eighths is the chance that you would get two heads and one tail, in any order. So that's probability. Uh, the formal definition, probability of an event, is a ratio. Ratio is a fraction, so you get a fraction. A ratio that measures the chances that the event occurs. So to find the probability, uh, you'll see a capital P next to uh, something. This P stands for probability, not permutation. Uh, and you have the total number of wanted outcomes divided by your total number of outcomes. So in the previous one, your wanted outcomes were, there are three ways to get two heads and a tail. And divided by your total outcomes, there were eight total in the sample space. Uh, we talk about success. Success is the desired outcome, and failure is anything that's not a success. Uh, probability facts, uh, and then we'll try some examples. Probability of an event is always between 0 and 1, which is kind of nice in this section. If you get an answer that's like 17, then you did something wrong. You should get an answer that's a decimal, which you can change to a percentage. If you change to a percent, then obviously it's between 0% and 100%. So all your answers should be between 0 and 100%. Um, the probability of an event that will never happen is 0 or 0%. Um, so that would be like uh, if you roll a die, a six-sided die, and you get a letter E. Well, that's impossible. You would only get one, two, three, four, five, or six when you roll a die. So it's impossible. You can't get E when you roll a die. A uh, probability of an event that will always happen is one or 100%. Uh, always happening. So that's like if you roll a die, what's the probability of getting a number? Well, 100% of the time, you'll get a number, because that's all you have on a die are numbers. Uh, and then the last thing, um, just a tip that we'll come back to after this first example. When selecting a group of objects in a probability question, a group of objects, two or three or four things at once, you want to use combinations, what we talked about in the previous lesson, uh, which we'll come back to that. Uh, OK, so on this first question, marbles. Uh, the SAT and standardized tests like to ask questions about marbles for some reason. I don't really know. Uh, marble, is, marble is like a glass, a small glass ball is what a marble is. So you have seven blue marbles, five green, four yellow, and eight, or sorry, four red, eight yellow. If you randomly chose one marble, what is the probability it will be green? So you want your success, number of ways to succeed is five. Out of your total, which is 5, 7, 4, and 8, which is 24 total. Uh, when you write your answer, you can leave it as a fraction, or you can write it as 5 divided by 24. Uh, if you write it as a percentage, you would write it as 20.8% is how I would like you to write the answer. Uh, but if you write it as a fraction, as long as it's simplified, uh, I don't really mind. Uh, letter B. Assuming you selected a green, what is the probability of selecting a blue? So 
one green is out, that means you have 23 marbles left because you got rid of one of the greens. Probability of selecting a blue, what you want, how many ways can you pick a blue marble, and you have seven blues. So color coordinate, yep, seven. Seven divided by 23, you would put 30.4%. Uh, again, you could leave it if you want to as seven over 23. That's a simplified fraction, seven over 23 is probability of getting a uh, blue. So you have a 30% chance, one in three chance that you get a blue. Um, on the next question, uh, everything's reset, still talking about the same bag of marbles. What's the probability that you select a blue? And then letter D, what's the probability you select anything but a yellow? So see if you could answer those two questions. Okay, so those are some basic probability questions. Uh, the next one, I just want to remind you of this again. My tip, when selecting a group of objects, use combinations, NCR. So Roman has a collection of 26 books, 16 are fiction, and 10 are nonfiction. Uh, being rather indecisive, indecisive means he can't choose what books he, want to take, he wants to take on vacation. Roman randomly chooses eight books to take with him on vacation. What's the probability that he chooses four fiction and four nonfiction? The way that the book might ask this question is like this. Um, probability, capital P, probability for fiction, comma, for nonfiction. So you're taking a group of for fiction, and you're picking a group of for nonfiction. Since we're picking a group, so this is a group compared to, the question doesn't say he picks one fiction, and then another fiction, and then another fiction in this order, and then a nonfiction. It doesn't say that. It says for fiction, for nonfiction. So we're going to use combinations. You have 16 total fiction books. You're choosing four of them. The order of the four books doesn't matter. So you have 16, choose four. And you're going to multiply by the event of picking a nonfiction, which you have 10, and you're choosing four. That's the numerator. That's your success. That's the number of ways all the possible ways that you can pick for fiction and for nonfiction from 16 and 10. The denominator are your totals. So you have 26 total books. And of those 26, you're choosing any eight in the denominator. So you're choosing any eight. Uh, one way to check that you're doing this right is these numbers on the right should always add up to the uh, number on the right in the denominator. So 4 and 4 is 8. So it's a good way to check. And a lot of times, the numbers on the left will add up, but they don't necessarily uh, add up. 16 and 10 is 26. Um, so you can type this in your calculator, and we'll write it as a percentage. The next question, Ebony has four male kittens and seven female kittens. She picks up two kittens to give to a friend. So she has a box with 11 kittens. She shakes the box, and then she randomly picks two kittens out of the box. Find the probability that those two kittens are females, or probability two are female. So notice she's taking a group. So you're not picking one kitten at a time. She's picking two kittens at once. Probability that both will be female. There are seven female. She's choosing two of them. If she picks these two kittens like this, and then switches her hands, it's the same two kittens. So it's a combination. The order of these two kittens doesn't really matter. Back and forth. Divided by your totals, your total would be 11 kittens, and you're choosing two. So notice that these numbers are the same. But uh, 7 and 11 aren't the same. They would be if you actually multiply by 4 choose 0. But 4 choose 0, you don't really have to. So we can use our calculator to get the answer for that. Um, so 38.2%. Bob is moving, sadly, and all of his CDs are mixed up in a box. 12 CDs are rock, 8 are jazz, and 5 are classical. If he reaches into the box and selects a CD randomly, find the probabilities. So notice on 22, he's picking a group, he's just reaching in. Probability he gets three jazz. Now it's probably going to be really unlikely that he gets three jazz. Notice you have 12 rock, 8 jazz, and 5 classical. Most likely he's not going to get three of the same kind. 
he's probably going to get like two rock CDs and one jazz CD. Ooh. So the probability is probably going to be really low. So how about try number 22, make sure you use combinations. And then when you try number 24, you're going to do classical, number of ways to get classical, times the number of ways to get jazz, two jazz. So see if you could answer those two questions. Okay, the last part of class, we're going to talk about odds. And I have examples on this on the next page. The odds of an event. Uh, this isn't the same as even or odd number. Odds is different in this context. The odds of an event is expressed in the number of ways that you can succeed, so the number of ways you can fail. So it's said like this, whatever your success is to your failure. So for instance, if you had a 3 to 2, 3 to 2, the probability of 3 to 2, the 3, the S, is in the numerator. And if there are three ways to succeed, two ways to fail, the denominator for your probability is the sum of 3 plus 2. So this answer would be 3 fifths probability, or 60%. Chance. So that's how odds relate to probability. So for instance, on this first one, the odds of an event is 1 over 2. So you would have 1 to 1. And that would be the odds. That's because you have 1 over 1 plus 1. There are two ways total. One way to succeed, one way to fail. So it's 1 to 1. On the next one, 4 goes as the first number. And you have to think, if there are four ways to succeed, how many ways are there to fail? Well, there would be seven to make a total of 11. So it would be four to seven would be the odds uh, in this context. And then turn the page. And I'll do the first one, and then I'll let you have a chance see if you can do the next three after that. Find the probability. You're given the odds six to one. Six goes in the numerator. And how many total possibilities are there? Well, there's seven, six plus one. So it's six sevenths. And see if you can do the next three. OK, the next question. We have a table below. shows the range of SAT scores for 2,476 freshmen at a small liberal arts college. If freshman student is chosen at random, finds the probability. So you have the different ranges of scores. You have 129 that scored between a 400 and a 440. You have 412 that scored above a 650 on the SAT. It goes up to 800. So 650 to 800. 412 will score that. So probability that if you pick one student at random, probability they scored a 400 out of a 400 to a 440. So you have 129 possibilities for success out of the total that you have. Now you could add these, add all of these for your total, but I told you right here that the totals. 2476. And we can get that on the calculator later. On the next question, if you randomly pick a student, 550 to 649, be careful with this because 550 is here, 649 is over here. So you need how many successes? You would have add both of these, and you would have 1222 out of the total. 2476. And we'll get that probability in a second. And then probability that you pick a student who made at least a 400. At least means 400 or more is at least. So 400 is here. At least this would be everyone made at least a 400. So you would have 2476 out of 2476 which gives 100% made at least a 400. Make sure you understand at least means that number or more. OK, last question. Uh, according to the US National Center for Health Statistics, the chance of a male born in 1990 living to be at least 65 is 3 and 4. What are the odds that a male lives to be at least 65? So you're changing 3 over 4 into odds. For females, the chances are 17 and 20. So you're changing this to odds. So see if you could change those to odds. 
Uh, so there the answers. Thank you for watching this video.